Hi all, um, many of you know the differences between spot forex and spread betting but for some of you you've asked some questions here and so about it so I thought I'd go into the differences because there are differences. Um, there's a reason why people trade with a professional um, spot forex um, broker other than spread betting. Okay, So spread betting has the, the obvious benefits of it being tax free. And and that is obviously a good one. So it is tax free. All right. Um, and then if you go spot over here, um, spot forex, okay, spot fx. So spot forex is not tax free. So it's you would get taxed on capital gains. Um, you wouldn't be income tax. You'd get cap, uh, capital gains tax. So. First things to bear in mind is most people have a capital gains tax allowance. So if you, your capital gains tax allowance, I always forget, it's, a, it's around about eleven thousand pounds. All right. Um, now bear in I'm well aware that we've got people who are overseas, and so you know for your own jurisdiction, if you're overseas, you probably can't spread bed anyway. So this is really for the UK people. So it's around about eleven thousand, might be eleven and a half thousand pounds tax. That's tax free before you pay capital gains tax. So um, what I find is, is quite laughable is that people are so obsessed about having spread betting accounts because the profits are tax free and yet if you've got £5,000 in a trading account let's say you'd have to make um, we'd have to make well over 100% uh, on that in, in a year before you're paying any tax so um, that's over 100% in a year. So the reality is that for most people, it's not really going to affect them anyway. Let's say you've got 10,000 pounds in a trading account. Sorry, I've got that wrong anyway. It'd be more than that. Sorry, it's 200% on a 500, uh, more than 200% on a 5,000 pound account. On a on a 10,000 pounds account, um, if you made a bit over 100%, well, you'd have to make sort of 120% before you start to get taxed on that extra little bit. So. The reality is you've really got to be on sort of 20,000 plus before you would notice it because on 20,000 again even if you made 50% in a year you're still not going to be paying tax. Most people are looking to make around about up to 50% a year. Some people want to make on from trading 50 to 100% a year but if you're in that ballpark tax is not an issue. So if tax isn't an issue, and bear in mind if you've got if you're married, then you could open two accounts, which means you means you can utilize both your husband's and your wife's um, tax-free um, allowance as well. So if you or if you're married or if, or even if you've got a partner, that any individual is going to have um, a capital gains tax allowance where they have to bridge that. Now if you're already obviously the one thing I haven't covered is if you're already utilizing your capital gains tax. Um, in other investments that you might have, then obviously then that's not going to benefit you um, uh, from your trading. But let's ass I'm assuming that you're not, in which case you've got to make more than £11,000 a year in profit on your trading account before you start paying any tax. And then you'll be paying, paying at a rate of just 20% on the, on the, on the increase, on the, anything above that. So unless you're a high rate taxpayer in which case it's um, it's slightly higher so putting it all in I think it's 20% anyway again I'm not an accountant it might even be less I think someone said actually thinking about it it might only be 10% so there's this big thing that people think oh I've got to have spread betting but the reality is that the tax you actually might end up paying if you're if you're on a standard sort of account sort of 10, 20,000, 30,000 in an account it's going to be so minimal Okay, so that's the first thing. What if you've got a hundred thousand pound in an account? Well, yeah, you can. You're still going to have your tax free allowance if you're not already utilising it. But if you've got a hundred thousand pounds in an account, then it's likely you might be making, well, you know, several tens of thousands of pounds a year. Um, in which case, yes, you will be paying tax on it. But there's that old adage: if you're paying tax, it means you're earning it. And one thing to bear in mind is. Um, is the other differences between spread betting and forex. So with spread betting um, your spread bet provider is a market maker. So they're a, a market maker. Okay so they're making a market for you. You are not actually trading in the real market when you're spread betting. You are trading on your broker's book so to speak. 
okay so it doesn't necessarily mean that they have a vested interest in you failing um, but they might have a slight interest in you failing um, they don't really want their customers to all all fail all of the time otherwise their customers would just quit and give up but um, they have a slight vested interest um, in you losing um, so there's a slight um, uh, what's the word um, bias um, from the broker so they therefore um, there are things that, that your spread bet broker will do in order to make themselves a little bit more money here and there one is they widen spreads over news now lots of brokers do that and that happens in the real market real market spot FX I see that on my spot FX um, spreads get widened because that is the real market the real market spreads will widen um, but with spread betters, what they sometimes do is they widen them further, don't they? And the other thing that spread betters will do to get you will be things like slippage. So slippage um, can be uh, an issue over things like news or even just on your a normal stop out. Market hits your stop, and um, and you notice, oh blimey, you know that there was just like an extra pip here or there that on my stop where I've actually been stopped. And your broke market maker broker will just say, oh, well, that was where the real market was, so we've put you there, sort of thing. So slippage, there's all these, these extra points here and there that a market maker broker, i.e. a spread better, will make the extra little bit of money off of you. The other thing is of usually their spreads are wider. So their spreads tend to be um, that little bit wider. They'll market the fact that they have tighter spreads, but in reality, their spreads are usually a bit wider. Um, okay, so spot FX, um, you are trading directly into the real market um, on spot FX, providing it is a proper spot, spot FX broker. There's a lot of spot FX brokers out there who are still actually market makers, so you've got to be careful of that because they're market makers as well. So um, someone like I use Saxo Bank. Um, someone mentioned on the uh, thing yesterday, Pepperstone um, in Australia, um, that is direct market access as well on some of their accounts, not all of them. Um, someone like Ducas Copy over in Switzerland, they will be um, direct market access as well. Um, but there will certainly be other spot FX brokers, even in the UK, who are, who are just actually market makers. But anyway, so spot FX, you're trading direct market access. All right, so I'll put DMA in here. So it's going directly into the market. So you are getting better fills, you're getting better execution than a spread better who might have a, a vested interest in making a little bit more money out of you so the difference is is I just find it adds up so the execution so I will still get slippage on spot FX if if I've been slipped if the markets moved fast um, through my stop loss but generally speaking execution is better I'm not saying execution on on spread betters is awful I'm just saying that when I looked at this set many years ago, when I switched properly, uh, mostly from spread betting across to um, Saxo Bank back in t about 2010, um, um, I realized that actually the difference in me paying tax on a spot FX account and where I'm saving on things like slippage, the spreads, um, the fact the widening of spreads, the general execution, I'm saving lots of money as I go through the year. So let me give you an example. So I've got so often this would happen um, because for a long time I, I maintained an ETX Capital account alongside my um, Saxo Bank account. And so let's say, um, okay, so here's the market. I've got it and this is my stop loss here. So I've got my stop loss here. And I'd be in the same trade on both ETX and Saxo Bank. Price would come down. Um, sometimes this and this happens more often than you think actually usually about once a month or so price will come down get really slow close to my stop and then and then bounce back up again funnily enough on ETX it would almost always get stopped out if it got to within a pip or so that's it ETX I get stopped out and it was the same with any other uh, spread better because the same thing would happen in our live trading room as well I'd call a trade I wouldn't get stopped out and some of the guys would because of the way that they execute and the thing is, the diff that's, that could be the difference between a stop out for, let's say, minus £400 or a winner for, let's say, plus £600. That is a, that's a thousand pounds swing. 
I've only got to have several of those during the year um, and some of them can be quite big bigger than that and that more than pays for me having um, a spot FX account which I have to pay tax on so and the tax is really simple they have all tax calculators on them and stuff so it's it's all done for you so um, there's your difference between the two I'm not saying you know don't spread bet if you want to spread bet that's absolutely fine but I just got to a point where I was taking too much money off the broker at that time and they didn't like it and so um, I ended up going and what was the other thing I was about to mention there and I don't like to have to say this, but it's it's something that happens. What happens if you have a losing year? Okay, so let's say, especially if you're a new trader, um, spread betting, spot effects, spot, um, and it and it ha it happens. Have a losing year, you know, you're marching down. Well, on spot effects, you can offset that losing year against your tax bill. You can't do that with spread betting. You can't you can't offset anything. You have losses with spread better, then that's it. You just lost with them. With spot FX, with a proper broker, then you can offset any losses against tax as well. So I know it's something that people don't want to have to talk about, but it does happen. And um, so, you know, again, it's another advantage. So there is a big advantage between spot FX and spread betting. But it doesn't mean to say you can't spread bet. But this my my choice was years ago to say I just have had enough of being with the spread better, them then not wanting me to trade in a certain way with them, and then having to go on to another spread better, and then the same thing happens again. So um, all right, I don't trade in that style anymore anyway. It was more of a that was back in the financial crisis, and it was more much more of a scalping type, you know, very very quick execution type style. But nevertheless, um, I quite like I've got so used to being with a um, a proper broker, if you will, um, where I'm trading into the actual market as opposed to onto a market maker. So I hope that gives you um, <clears throat> some information there. I'm not saying don't spread bet, but you know, if you're sort of certainly, if you're realistically, if you are trading with anything less than a twenty thousand pounds account, you should be actually trading with a spot FX account because what's the point? trading for a spread betting account when you when you utilize your tax tax allowance you're not paying tax anyway so and then you're getting all the benefits of the better execution once you start going above that then of course fun enough there's an argument once you're at 50,000 100,000 or more there's an argument to spread bet but then you've got you've got much bigger position sizes on and you want to have the better execution as well so realistically um, most of the time for a lot of people this is the better way um, to go so um, now I'll put a link in if, if anyone's interested in um, I don't care which broker you trade with but um, we I did do a deal with Saxo Bank um, at the beginning of this year they said look Charlie we want more of your customers and so I'm giving them a little bit of a plug here but I use them you guys have known I've used them for years so they pay me a few hundred quid um, it, for everyone who signs up you know any easy trader client who signs up through a link um, then they give me a few hundred quid and we just Sam then just gives you or yeah well, Sam I say we do um, we pay you a hundred pounds uh, cash back so once you've done I think it's um, a couple of trades I think it's two or three trades then um, they let us know at the end of each month they just give a list of names and say right there you go and then we pay you a hundred pounds so there you go a hundred pounds take the wife out take the husband out whatever um, other than that I don't have any information on you don't worry um, they're not allowed to under uh, data protection rules FFC, FCA and everything else they're not allowed to tell us anything about what you do other than the fact that you have a we you've signed up and you've qualified you've done your minimum uh, trades so if anyone's interested in in that then um, you can sign up through the link and you will get a hundred pounds um, cash back off of us so that would be we basically they pay us at the end or the uh, they, they do it on a month on month basis so once we've had the spreadsheet come through to us we've got um, probably I don't know how many people have opened up accounts maybe 15 or 20 people have opened up accounts now so you know it's, it's worthwhile to you guys and so um, but don't get me wrong if you want to go to a different broker go to whoever you like but those are the main differences between spot effects and spread betting